application of DSL technology relies on strongly on the existing telephone infrastructure that is found in almost every household and office globally. With the continued development of newer DSL standards allowing reads of up to 100 megabits per second, the application of DSL as a WAN technology for home and enterprise remains firmly valid. The traditional DSL connections are established over legacy ATM networks. However, Ethernet has continued to emerge as the underlying technology on which many service providers establish their networks. And therefore, technology, uh, therefore knowledge of PPoE technologies remains valued for establishing DSL connectivity at the enterprise edge. Okay, so we know the Ethernet is very popular in our network, but Ethernet, it has one disadvantage, that is, it cannot be authentication. The user cannot be authenticated. But PPP, one benefit of PPP is it can help us to authenticate the users, but for the PPP link, the bandwidth is very limited. So we can, uh, we can use the PPP and Ethernet together. So on one hand, we can ensure the high bandwidth. On the other hand, we can ensure the authentication for the users. So that's why PPPoE is funded. Okay, so the objectives of this lecture, after completion of this section, you will be able to describe the PPPoE connection establishment process. And you will be able to configure a PPPoE session. OK, first, let's look at the digital subscriber lines. Uh, you know, in some enterprises or in, at our homes, we have telephone. And this telephone, we have the telephone lines connect to the ISP. So we can use this telephone line and use PPPoE technology to help us to connect to the DSLAM. Then DSLAM, uh, between DSLAM and BRAS, there is Ethernet link or ATM, but most of the time is Ethernet link. And in this link, the DSLAM will help us to transmit our data to the BRAS. BRAS is the device that can help us to authenticate and account the users. So uh, in this scenario, we can do the internet connection as the home or as the enterprise through the PPPoE. And also the PPPoE application in DSL. Here uh, in one enterprise, we have a router and we have several hosts. And we also have a DSL modem. Okay, and uh, on the router, first we can connect to the uh, DSL modem, and DSL modem connect to the ISPs, this LAM. Then this LAM connect to the PPPoE server. So the server and the router, they can connect, they can do the PPPoE connection, and the PPPoE server, they can authenticate the users in this enterprise. Finally, these users they can go to the internet. Okay, so PPPoE, there are five types of the PPPoE protocol packets, which is PADI, DO, DR, S, and T. I and O is used to discover the PPPoE server, and then the server will send the offer to the client. After this, the client it will send PADR, means request, request to the server to set up the PPPoE session. And then the server, it will send PADS, which means session confirmation to the client to set up this session. And we can use the PPPoE session to distinguish different PPPoE clients. So finally, if one client, he wants to terminate this PPPoE session, he will send PADT, means terminate, to the server. He can terminate this session. Okay, so this is the PPPoE session establishment process. 
first stage is discovery stage. Okay, so in this network, router A is the PPPoE client. At first, he will broadcast PADI packet. So in this PADI packet, the destination MAC address is broadcast MAC address. So when he broadcasts this packet in this network, all the other device, including server A, B, C, they can receive this PADI. Okay, and when the server receives the PADI, they need to respond. So now server A and server B, both of them, they are PPPoE server. So they will send PADO to router A. In the PADO, the destination MAC address will be the unicast MAC address of router A. So in this time, we can see A and B, both of them, they will send the PADO to router A. So for router A, which one will be the PPPoE server? Let's continue. So finally, router A select the server A to be his PPPoE server because router A received, received server A's PADO first. So the first one will be the server of the client. So the router A, he will send PADR request to request to set up a session with the server A. And now when the server A receive the request, he will send PADS session confirmation to the router A. After this packet is received by the router A, now one PPPoE session is, is set up between router A and the server A. Okay, so this is the whole process of the PPPoE session establishment. We can see there are two negotiation. One is PPPoE negotiation. The other one is PPP negotiation. So PPPoE negotiation is finished after the session is set up. When the session is set up between the router A and server A, between the client and the server, now they will go to the PPP negotiation. In the last lecture, we have learned how does PPP negotiation do, okay? How does PPP negotiation work? We know in the PPP negotiation, there are uh, RCP negotiation. The RCP negotiation, the negotiation, they will negotiate the magic number and authentication and so forth. And then they will go to the authentication stage. In the authentication stage, we have two modes. One is PAP, the other is CHAP. So in this process, in this diagram, we can see A send challenge, then a server A send challenge and router A response, then success. This is three-way handshake. So we can know this is CHAP authentication. After the authentication is done, it's successful. So the server A and the client, they will continue to do the NCP negotiation. NCP negotiation, if our network protocol is IP, so in this negotiation, they will negotiate the IP address of each other. Okay, let's continue. Packet size negotiation. We know for the PPP protocol, it has MRU. MRU means maximum receive unit. By default, it's 1,500 uh, 1, bytes. But because, because the PPPoE header is six bytes and the PPP header is two bytes, so for the payload, the maximum, the max, maximum byte of the payload only can be 1,492. So when we, uh, if, if the bytes, if the length of the payload is larger than this value, it may be fragmented. So when we configure the PPPoE MRU, we should configure 1,492. 
Next is PVPoE session termination. When we want to terminate the PVPoE session, the client router A, he will send PADT to the server to tell the server he wants to terminate this session after this packet is received by the server A, so this session will be terminated. Okay, let's continue to look at the configuration of PBPoE. First, we know that PBPoE is used on the dialer dialer interface. So first, on the router A, on the router A, which is PBPoE client, we should create a dialer interface because the router A it doesn't have the physical dialer interface. So we need to create a, vir a virtual dialer interface. Okay, on router A, first, we need to create a rule, dialer rule. And the dialer rule one, IP permit. It means when we want to send an IP package, we can use this dialer interface, this dialer link. And then we we'll continue to create an interface dialer one, create a virtual interface dialer one. And the user of dialer interface is enterprise. And then we can bind, we can bind this dialer interface to dialer group one. And then we set the dialer bundle to one. We set this bundle, dialer bundle, this is used to bind the physical interface together with the logical interface, the dialer interface, okay? And continue because we need to authenticate the client. So we need to configure the authentication. This is the CHAP authentication. User is enterprise at Huawei, and then the password, Huawei123. And then IP address, PPP negotiate, which means for the client, we don't need to configure our IP address. So the IP address will be negotiated with the server. The server, it will assign the IP address for the client. And then is the PPPoE session binding. After we configure the dialer interface, now we need to configure the physical interface, which is GE001. And in this interface, we use this command, PPPoE client dialer bundle number one on demand. Remember, we just create the bundle number one, and now we bind this physical interface together with that dire bond, bundle one, together with that logical interface. And then on demand means when we want to send a package to the server, we will set up this PPPoE session. If we don't have any IP package to send to the server, we don't need to set up this session, okay? And finally, we need to create a default route, IP route static 000, 000 and 0. Next hop, the outbound interface is dialer 1, which means any package we want to go to this default route, we need to go to the interface dialer 1. And after the configuration, we can use the command display interface dialer 1 to check the configuration, to do the validation. And now we can see the dialer one current state is up and the line protocol current state is also up. And here, in the, at the last, in the last, we can see the LCP open, IPCP open, means the LCP and IPCP, they are all, uh, both of them, they are negotiated. And then, uh, we can also use the display PPPoE client session summary to see. At first, the state is idle. And after a few seconds, we can see the state is up. Okay. And this is the PPPoE application in enterprise network. Okay, so in this enterprise network, we have a private network domain and a public network domain. 
and between the private network domain and public network domain we have a PPPoE client so in the public network domain we have a PPPoE server so the privately addresses host cannot exist in the public domain and address translation along with PPPoE necessary if the host wants to communicate or they want to go to some servers in the public network domain they need to go to the PPPoE client and through the client to do the authentication with the server after the authentication is done they can go to the public network domain okay last let's see some questions first why is it necessary to reduce the MTU or RU size of the PPPoE packet? Okay. Because we know in the PPPoE packet, we have the PPPoE header and PPP header. The PPPoE header is six bytes and the PPP header length is two bytes so that's why we need to reduce the eight bytes so the payloads can only be one four nine two bytes okay next what is the purpose of the dialer bundle command when establishing the PPPoE connection okay in the router we know in the router we don't have the physical dialer interface so we must create the logical dialer interface and we will give a dialer bundle to this logical interface but the real traffic the traffic must be buried be bared on the physical interface which is always the ethernet okay so we must bind the logical interface and the physical interface together how to bind them so we should enter the physical interface the gigabit ethernet interface in this interface we should specify the dialer bundle to bind that physical interface to the logical interface okay 